Hello. How are we, alright? Oh, that's good. Right then. What to draw today? Now then, I've been asked by a couple of people about a character called George Badger. He was having an adventure at the moment with his grandfather and their friend, Diggy the Mole. So I thought, let's, why not draw Grandfather Badger, George Badger, and if we've got time, but we'll also put Diggy the Mole in. So let's start this off. Now, we've got to get the shape of the badger's head right down to his little nose. Now, of course, this is a cartoon badger, so he's wearing clothes. Now, I know. I know badgers don't wear clothes. I'm fully aware of that. Before you purists jump all over me. But this is a bit of fun. As I've said on more than one occasion, we're just having a bit of fun. So that's roughly the shape of the badger's head. Now then, what we need to do here is we need to put the nose in, I think. So that's there. Now a badger has a black stripe on his head. So we get, get his eye in the position we want to put it. Now, when you shade these eyes in, if you're going to try and do this, try and keep a light dot at the front. And that sort of gives it, sort of, brings the eye to life. Like so. You see? Simple as that. And now we've got this stripe on its head that seems to go... I mean, what I did, to be honest with you, I googled badges. And if you do that, you'll get lots and lots of pictures of badges come up. And you can use those, and it'll give you a great guide to what you want to draw. I google a lot of things. To be honest with you, if you start off relatively lightly with this, it's easier to rub out or erase, which depends on your point of view. If you make a mistake or you put something where you don't want it to be. Because the heavier, when you start to press heavily, and A, you're going to mark the paper. And B, you're going to mark the paper. Which you don't really want to do on either. Now, this is going to be grandfather. Now, grandfather wears glasses, which we do quite simply like. So, there's one that side of his glass, his nose, and there's one that side of his nose. Now, what you could do is just put a little loop over like that. And now, if we get the eraser, and these are good because they're quite fine pointed erasers, so you can actually do that, you see. And now, because I was going to colour that, what I would do, I would lower the top of that glass over there, it looks a bit heavy, doesn't it? A bit too high. What I would be inclined to do, 
to give it the appearance of grass is I think that's going to be better if we take that dot line out there see this is what I say to you when I say that I tend to go over things more than once so there we go now we're getting somewhere where we want to be. Now, what we could do with that, if you want to, like I said, you can get a nice blue colour. And you can just do a very faint blue to give the impressions of glass. It is glasses, you see? Like so. Now, if you wanted to say, we'll give these... Uh, metal framed rim now if we use an orange pencil we could give him quite a snazzy pair of spectacles not quite in the realms of Elton John but uh, you know not far off it so there we are so we cut his nose in a bit now give that a bit of darkness because we pretty much where we want to be with that and we got some whisker marks we can put in here like so now then let's get this a bit darker this about just right here now, what I tend to do is if you do little strokes like this, it will give the impression of the fur, which is quite a nice effect. You see? Now, we just want to go around this eye part. And, like I said, you could, if you leave a line around the outside like that, you get quite a nice effect of some character. Of course, what you've got to bear in mind with these characters is they are friendly and happy and nice. Some of the characters in this book that I'm doing are not so nice. So you would do the eyes possibly differently to give them that more menacing look which I will show you how to do at a later date but see if we keep going there we go we're getting there now where we said where we want to be so now that's a little bit on the high side so we get this line in here now then we want to go up here, maybe, and that's the ear on the other side. And of course, you won't see it the same way as you see the ear on this side. So really, there we are, we're getting the badger's head. But uh, I think really a lot of this is it's how it looks to your eye. Not anybody else is yours. And if you do that, uh, you'll be happy with it. Whether anybody else will be is another story, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter a bit. <clears throat> no, like I said before, I gave up trying to please everybody a long time ago. Because you just won't do it. And it's no point trying. So now, then, this is going to have a shirt coming around here, a collar. Because what we got on dear old granddad is he's going to have a bow tie. Which is rather fetching. Like so. 
slightly bigger this side to give it the right effect. We've got a nice v-neck pullover on and that's the front of the shirt going down there like that. And then he's a bit on the stout side which as you get older is a thing that tends to happen to us all. There we go. But uh, there we are. This is coming along nicely now. He's got his overcoat on. Which is uh, like this, comes around here, lapels, and then the outside of his coat back there. Now, we're going to make him a little bit stouter, so we put this is where the waistline is going to come. You see, now what shall we? I think what we'll do, we'll give him a. Let's give him a polka dot bow tie. How about that? Bit of fun. You know, the old polka dot bow tie, bit like a cloud tie, I suppose, but not that I'm suggesting that uh, Granddad Badger is a clown certainly not anything but in fact uh, oh glasses are slipping off my nose again I'm going to have to get some elastic or something for these glasses they do that a lot and we'll come down here with this and then we've got the better bring the lapel down so it kind of matches the other side otherwise I should have the purists on me back but actually no they don't I don't get any comments actually one actually was very nice somebody asked you to be my friend and if I'm absolutely honest I'm not sure how to do that on this particular platform YouTube, I'm relatively new to it. So any of you experts out there would uh, like to inform me, that would be much appreciated. There you are, see, now, now we're getting that, see. Now you've got to be, again, wary of the time. Now I'm going to have to push this over a bit now because I haven't left myself a lot of space. Now, where should we put... Let's put George over here, because now George, obviously, is a young badger. So, there's his little snout coming down. Not got quite got his face right. we got to get the shape of the head. Like I said, pretty much the same as Granddad's. But slightly, I don't know, slightly different anyway. Because he's a youngster. But, uh... You could doodle around with these shapes to your heart's content. And we like to give these guys a nice smiley face. I mean, not that um, their mouths are not in the right place, obviously if it was a real badger, but we got some what they call in the trade poetic license, you see. I think we better take that up to there a bit. And go there. Because at the moment he's looking a bit like a teddy bear. Not so much like a badger. 
No, we're getting somewhere. No, we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Don't you think? Of course, you can't reply to me, so I try to reply for you. Yes, we do think you are getting somewhere, Mark. Well, thank you very much. You're very kind. Now, again, we got this eye business to do here. So we could again. Now, see what I mean? You, there you go. See, now you've brought this eye alive, basically, haven't you? See, now we've got to bring up the lines again. Let's use the trustier reader again. But I mean, if you were going to actually colour this in, whether you were going to use watercolour or my preferred medium at the moment is watercolour pencils, I did buy some nice brush pens, but they tend to be very, very sharp colours. And the other thing you guys have to remember if you're going to use those is they will bleed through this type of paper. So you want to use a bleed proof paper. Otherwise they will bleed through to the back of the paper you're using. And that can be a little annoying and wasteful. Oh, yeah, I see now George is now George is coming into his own. You see. And of course you've got to remember he's a bit of a juvenile. So we don't put the same sort of things on George as we would grab I mean George, I would imagine, would not wear a bow tie. Really, would he? I don't think so. I mean, he might do. Nothing wrong with that if he wanted to. I, personally, have never actually owned a bow tie. Actually, that's not entirely true. I did once have a clip-on one back in the 60s when I was very small. But that wasn't my choice. That was when my dear parents decided what I wore when I went out. And of course, they didn't always make the decisions that you would actually want to make yourself. But uh, when you're that age, there's not a lot you can do about it. I can remember my dad taking me down to his barber's for a short back and sides. Of course, I think that's quite fashionable now. But uh, when I was younger, it certainly wasn't something that we wanted to... Oh, hated it with a fiery passion. So there we go, we're getting, I mean, these hands, I mean, you could actually do what Disney did. I mean, Disney used to put human hands on everybody. I mean, invariably they wore gloves. I'm not quite sure the reasoning behind that, but they did. Probably because it was easier to draw. I don't know, but there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. There's young, young George, that side of grandfather. Now we can finish putting this dark side down here. Because this is uh, pretty much what a badger looks like. Now I personally love badgers. And I'm very, very, very much against what they've been doing in this country. 
with the culling of badges, I've got to be honest with you. I don't like that at all. But then again, there's quite a few things that they do in this country I don't actually agree with. But I can't really do that. I do what I can. But uh, unfortunately, I've yet to get a candidate that I actually voted for elected. So there we are. But anyway, we won't go into politics because uh, that's definitely something that is very personal to you and I wouldn't dream of forcing my views on you guys. That's if anybody is actually listening to the nonsense I tend to come out with as I do in these pictures. Now, I'm not going to do colour on this picture, full colour. So what we'll do is we'll use the pencil to shade in these characters. Now, the thing about doing this with pencil, this will smudge. I mean, you can, when it's finished, give it a quick blast of a spray that will fix it. But at the moment, if I rub my finger across that, it will smudge. Now, if you want to draw something over here and you've got to put your hand on your work, that can be quite catastrophic. So you might want to have a plain piece of paper handy that you can put over your work because it's not, I mean sometimes you can start from the other side. You know, start from here and work across the page, that's what I mean. But it's not always possible. Now then, let's quickly bring the mole into play, because uh, well, what we can do here with no granddad's coat, we can put some checks on here. And I find if you do a few lines, now, if you wanted to cut colour, you could actually colour this with something like a light green or something and these stripes you could use I don't know a red sharpen the pencil quite sharply you see what I'm coming at here with these stripes now You're getting a nice now if you want to give like a tweedy effect you can add a few dots and a few dashes and you get that sort of bristly type quality which you get with tweed of course these badgers being sort of red basically raw creatures they would probably wear tweed wouldn't they I don't know maybe Anyway, now then, see, now we got this far. Now, Mole, by his nature, is a underground fellow, isn't he? So what we're going to do for Mole is give him a hard hat. Like a miner's hat. Now, I'm going to do this from memory, so you're going to have to forgive me if I get this not quite right because it's uh, my memory's not always as it should be but you see now there you are you see now we're getting somewhere but uh, normally oh and you've got a, you're gonna have a lamp on the front here because there you go oh, we have this little light 
bulb could go in there and that would go around there yeah my little box like so that would fit to the front of his hat and I would probably if I was going to colour this hat in colour it in yellow or something or blue or what well it really is up to you but I've been that's because it's like a construction worker's hat isn't it? type of thing now then the bowl you see there there's his hat he's coming together like that uh, that'll do roughly and the mole he's got a relatively long snout you can see the sniff out things and what we're going to do there we are see that's that's the sort of look we're going for and they got tiny little eyes like that like just a little dot but of course he's going to have a pair of glasses as well because they haven't got terribly good eyesight moles incredibly good sense of smell so I'm told I I mean I don't know I mean I, I used to read a lot of books about nature I was very fat I was fascinated when I was a child with animals and things I wanted to be a vet once see that there's this little nose now if I was going to color that in that nose that nose snout or whatever you want to call it would be pink and then you got his little chin coming down like that and the back of his head now, moles are, are quite cute to look at, I think. I know they're not so much fun if you get several of them in your garden. But I think I kind of like nature in my garden. I actually have a nature. God, I've got two ponds and a stream that I put in. We've got lots of bushes and trees and things that attract a lot of wildlife hedgehogs in fact I even had one of these guys, these badgers and because the trouble is nowadays everybody's got fences with no way through and of course the poor old badger got stuck in the garden for the day and had to make a little nest for himself under the fence and he dug a great big hole and I was a bit concerned so I actually ran up the animal control people just to find out what to do and they said leave him and when it gets dark he will go about his business which is exactly what he did now I thought this could be fun for the mole to have a flying jacket you see oh Diggy because this is Diggy his name's actually Diggy I have actually got a full name for him, but at this precise moment, his full name escapes me. But I will, at some point, post it on there. But uh, like I said, if you'd like to join me on my Facebook page, I do tend to post individual drawings of these guys on there. And that's Mark Row Art. And if you put that into the search engine, well, you'll, it should come up. You'll recognise my work. So it should come up. I mean, if it doesn't, get in touch with me on here. and I'll, Well, I could put a link on, I suppose, couldn't I? Which might be an idea. Because I do put quite a bit of things on my Facebook page. And there we are. I mean, really, that's pretty much what we've got here now, you see, is the mole, Grandfather Badger, and George Badger. The three main protagonists of 
a story I'm actually writing at the moment. Whether it will ever get finished or published is anybody's guess. Because I don't know. I suppose I've been doing this for a, a very long time. And uh, never actually got round to do anything. Like publishing anything as such. I seem to spend most of my time trying to earn a living to pay the bills. I've never been brave enough to take that real big gamble. So like I said, these aren't lessons or anything, they're just a bit of fun. If you get anything from it, I mean the thing is, I'm getting on in years now, on the grand scale of things, and I'm still learning. And I don't think you ever stop learning, do you really? Anyway, there we are. We're going to leave it there. I might come back to it and do a part two and put a bit of colour in. In fact, I probably will. Okay, well, thanks. Goodbye, and I'll see you soon.